Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Earlier this year, Bloomberg data reporter Jin Shan Hong got hung up on this question. It was something she kept noticing at work, at home, everywhere she went. She couldn't shake it. Why does it seem like everyone everywhere like seems to be getting sick all the time? Jin Shan's colleagues in Hong Kong and their family members all seemed to be getting sick. Jin Shan kept catching things too. Everybody was talking about it. I'm a person that rarely gets sick. I had pink eye, my throat was swollen, I couldn't breathe through my nose. It was the worst two months of my life. Here at The Big Take, we've been hearing similar laments from our family and friends all year. My husband had COVID in September. My daughter and I had strep throat in October, RSV in November. It seemed like everybody had their own sickness story. I had pneumonia, it turns out. I went to urgent care twice. It probably took all in all about three weeks before I started feeling human again. In March, I had shingles at the age of 29. At first, I thought it was allergies, but now I think I'm sick. My nose is running uncontrollably, and I feel achy and tired. Even Olympic athletes are getting sick. This week, Team USA sprinter Noah Lyles won a bronze medal in the 200-meter dash, only to disclose afterwards that he had tested positive for COVID a few days before. Olympic authorities knew Lyles had COVID, but he was allowed to compete anyway. In fact, dozens of athletes have reportedly tested positive for COVID at the Games. But most people seem to have accepted that that's just our new reality. From the sniffles to shingles to our hard-to-shake nemesis, COVID, this year, sickness is showing up everywhere. But Jinshan is a data reporter. She knows talk is cheap and noticing a trend isn't enough. We decided to look into this and find out whether it's just a perception issue or is there something really going on that we should figure out for the public. It was a mystery. So Jinshan and her team went into detective mode, working with disease forecasters to gather case counts, calling up doctors, combing through research from all over the world. And what they found was truly eye-opening. Today on the show, grab your hand sanitizer and your N95s for a data detective story. We join Jinshan as she scours the research for clues, culprits, correlations, and causations, as she takes on the case of why everybody seems to be getting sick all the time. This is The Big Take from Bloomberg News. I'm Sarah Holder. Tracking how sickness spreads is a massive data undertaking. And to begin to understand how often it's spreading post-COVID, Bloomberg's Jin Shan Hong first had to narrow down a list of illnesses to look at. So she enlisted the help of a London-based firm that forecasts diseases worldwide called Airfinity and the help of her colleague Bhuma Srivastava. Together, they analyzed data from 60 public health agencies and organizations like the WHO and UNICEF, and came up with a grim list. We were able to identify at least 13 communicable diseases that are surging um, in parts of the world that's above pre-pandemic waves. And in some cases, it surpassed the pre-pandemic peak by a significant margin. These diseases included cholera, measles, tuberculosis, RSV, dengue, and the flu. But Jinchan also wanted to know where these diseases were spiking. So before the pandemic, we were able to find out the peak of every disease in every country between 2017 to 2019. And after COVID, we have 2022 to 2024, also three years, and we find our peak and compare the two. Whenever we see a spike, then we mark it on a map. And with that, we were able to identify regions where certain diseases are surging more um, profoundly. Now, this data wasn't completely exhaustive. But it did show some notable trends. All 13 of the diseases they tracked had surged above post-pandemic levels somewhere. It may not be higher in every country, but then we do see every one of them seem to be showing up in a variety of geographies at higher levels. 
So, for example, dengue uh, is making a very strong re- resurgence in Americas. We also have like measles, um, like spreading to uh, about 20 states in the U.S. and other countries in Europe. And we are also seeing tuberculosis is like really making a lot of spikes in the developing world. And with that, everyday common diseases like cold and flu and RSV are also reported above pre-pandemic levels. Some of the surges are especially dramatic. In more than 40 places, at least one of these diseases has seen case counts leap tenfold or more from their pre-pandemic baselines. Influenza was up 40 percent in the U.S. during the last two flu seasons compared to pre-COVID levels. Besides the health impacts and the strains to the medical system this can create, there are also other economic impacts. All those sick days are starting to add up. We were looking through workplace research reports from um, places like UK and the US, and there is more absenteeism. With that, we are seeing people reporting more sick days or taking longer sick leaves from work. Maybe in the pre-COVID years, when you were a little sick, you still go out and like have a drink. It's like, ah, I'm sick, but I'm not sick to a degree that I cannot function. I will still go to work. But now, like, I think we are also more aware that, oh, I feel a bit sick today. Maybe I shouldn't go to work. That's one helpful lesson to come out of COVID, that staying home when you're sick can curb infections. But illnesses are spiking anyway, and that's concerning. Especially because, Jin Chan reminded me, the COVID-19 pandemic was unprecedented, and so is our post-pandemic reality. According to WHO's uh, chief scientist, Jeremy Farrell, we are really in a new place because the last devastating major pandemic we had was in 1918, which was so-called the Spanish flu. And back then, we were not having as many vaccinations, um, diagnosis, or even treatment. Like at that time, it was really a different stage. So what we are facing right now is really an unparalleled situation that scientists are racing to understand. Even though it was a massive data lift, Jin Chan says that figuring out that we were all getting sick more often was actually the easy part. Coming up after the break, unraveling the mystery of what's causing this spike in global illness. If you think about this story as a big global health mystery, at this point, Bloomberg's Jin Shan Hong has identified the, say, victims, those of us who are getting sick more often all around the world. But who, or what, in this case, is the culprit? What's making everyone sick in this post-pandemic era? Well, Jin Shan told us there are a few major theories floating around. I asked her to introduce some of the prime suspects. So first, there's this idea that we all lost our immunity because we stayed home during the pandemic. There were quarantines, we weren't being exposed to as many diseases. How much of that is at play here? That theory, um, which was at one point very leading theory um, during the pandemic, um, is that it's called immunity debt, where people became more susceptible to various infectious respiratory diseases because they were not exposed to the pathogen during um, the lockdown years. But that's still quite controversial among scientists that we talk to. Um, Some of them think there's not enough data yet to prove it, and some others think if even if they make um, resurgence, they are not supposed to be the, the size of the spikes that we actually see today. While this immunity debt theory is contested, experts told Jinshan that lockdowns could have contributed to the current spikes in a different way. Babies who avoided catching respiratory diseases during COVID quarantines and school closures may be getting exposed and sick for the first time as toddlers. It's more like a delayed education to their immune system. Delayed education. In other words, in the years since lockdowns ended, more kids might now be getting sick all at the same time. These kinds of COVID-related delays are also showing up in some countries' mortality rates. 
Some countries that used to control COVID very well during the pandemic years seem to have higher all-cause mortality rates right now. So one theory they presented was that because those countries were able to keep frail elderly people live longer and keep them away from regularly circulating disease that are usually common in the communities. So with that, they are now facing a higher death burden. Another mystery doctors and scientists are trying to investigate is the effect of COVID infections on people's longer-term health. Did you look into long COVID? Has COVID itself made people more susceptible to other illnesses? Yeah, that is also a very heated topic that scientists are looking into because COVID definitely has changes on some people that's much more than the general public. But that's still like relatively a smaller population compared to the general public. In terms of everybody, I think there's no proof at this point, according to our interviews, that we are becoming much weaker than before. Our next suspect in the rise of illness across the world? The anti-vaccine movement. For example, one thing that went very rampant during COVID was the vaccine misinformation, the social media, um, and how the information got spread to many, many people. And the mistrust of vaccination seems to continue. Vaccine hesitancy and misinformation, along with supply chain issues, have led to a steep drop in childhood vaccination rates. In Europe, measles cases spiked 30-fold last year, after a few years where nearly 2 million infants missed their shots. And it's not just measles vaccines. Basic vaccinations for children, such as DTP, had declined, and that's resulting in a lot of the surges right now. Meanwhile, COVID exacerbated other issues that can keep people sick. There's also the social inequality caused indirectly by COVID policies. So there are increasingly poorer communities living in crowded environments, and that prompts and potentially fuel disease uh, circulating in the areas. So those are all the culprits that are potentially related to the pandemic and its aftermath. But as any mystery fan knows, oftentimes the real villain is completely unrelated to the obvious suspect. So I asked Jinshan, were there any other plot twists or culprits unrelated to the pandemic? When we talked about climate change, we tend to think about economic um, losses or risks to different kinds of countries and people. But like in terms of diseases, now we are seeing it playing out in multiple aspects. With more flooding, with more extreme weather, with more warm weather, we are seeing, for example, like dengue, um, which relies on mosquitoes to spread the disease, is getting to more places because um, mosquitoes were able to survive in previously colder environments. So Jin Chen, out of everything that we've talked about, what did the experts tell you is the most likely reason why sicknesses are surging? They tell us it's a perfect storm and it is a puzzle. A perfect storm. What they mean is there's not just one bad guy here. There's the disruption to our immune systems, a rise in global poverty, climate change, and a dip in childhood vaccination rates. It's that last one, vaccines, that many scientists and health researchers agreed is most compelling. In the meantime, I asked Jinshan, what can we do to stay healthier? I've been sick, you've been sick, nobody likes being sick. How can people at home buck the global trend and stop getting sick all the time? That's something I think people have been trying to uh, find a balance with. Do we need to continue a lot of the measures that we started with COVID, for example, wearing masks on public transport and buses when you feel unwell? The answer from some um, experts that we talked to is probably yes, because there's kind of a, a public fear for doing those measures again because they make them look weird. Like, you know, COVID is over. Why are you still wearing masks? But actually... Right, you're living in the past. Yeah, are you living in the past? What are you afraid of? But if you really feel sick, that might help to spare your colleague from this particular <laughs> disease that you are going through. So after months of research and data collection and creating her map, 
Jinchon did not end up being able to name any one offender. There was no Colonel Mustard in the library with the candle. To really hammer home the metaphor, he likely had some accomplices. The culprits seemed to include, all of us have slightly wonky immune systems after being isolated and inside for a long time. Though that might be a little bit of a red herring. There's the effects of the COVID virus itself. Fewer people are getting vaccines and climate change the wild card that's causing disease spreading agents like mosquitoes to move to different places. But my main takeaway from Jin Shan's research is that even as we try to move our minds away from the days of COVID, in a lot of ways, our bodies have not moved on. At least, not yet. This is The Big Take from Bloomberg News. I'm Sarah Holder. This episode was produced by Adriana Tapia. It was edited by Stacey Vanek-Smith and Rachel Chang. It was mixed by Veronica Rodriguez. It was fact-checked by Thomas Liu. Special thanks to Arafat Jolasho Perry. Our senior producers are Kim Gittleson and Naomi Shaven. Our senior editor is Elizabeth Ponso. Nicole Beemsterboer is our executive producer. Sage Bauman is head of podcasts. Thanks so much for listening. Please follow and review The Big Take wherever you get your podcasts. It helps new listeners find the show. We'll be back next week. <laughs> 